This is not how you should be filming your next viral video in 2023. If you wanna be discreet or you just want a different point of view, it's time you use the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses to record that crispy Karen content. I've been using the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses for almost two months now, and I have detailed my thoughts and will go in depth on how they can revolutionize the way you take video. What's up Team Tag Avengers? My name is J.I. and I make videos on the technology in our lives and how we can use them to make our lives easier. So let's jump into the Ray-Ban Meta Sunglasses and see how that can be achieved. The package is simple and opens up to just the glasses case. Surprisingly though, no cable or cleaning cloth. Not a good look, especially for the price. But the design of the glasses make up for it, I guess. They look great and I love the style that I chose. However, I'm quickly regretting not getting the transition lenses. I wear glasses and contacts on occasion and the clear lenses would allow me to wear these on a daily basis anywhere, like indoors or at night, without looking like a total weirdo. Sunglasses only have a limited use case scenario if you're a normal person, not this guy. Now the case is actually really high quality and one thing to note, you will need this case because you can't charge the glasses without them. The inside has two metal pins that charge the glasses when they're inside it and it charges using USB-C on the outside. The case also includes a multicolor LED to indicate when it's charging or fully charged. It is a high quality case, but I do wish these manufacturers would start using wireless charging or USB-C so you don't have to rely on another accessory. The glasses themselves are all plastic with metal hinges, but feels really high quality. On the front, we have the two camera lenses, which are evenly positioned. The one side of the glasses has our only primary physical button and a touchpad along the frame to help you with playing, pausing, and volume. The other side doesn't include any controls. We also have a five mic system that does pretty well for noise cancellation. Opening up both hinges activates the glasses and if you haven't paired it for the first time, it will default you into pairing mode. If you have already paired it, it would just activate the glasses from sleep mode. The glasses have two LEDs, one on the outside that indicates you're recording or taking a picture. This cannot be disabled and I think that's a good thing for privacy reasons. On the inside, there's also an LED that mimics the outside LED so that the person wearing the glasses will know when it's recording. This can be viewed in the top right hand side of your peripheral vision. The first time putting on the glasses, I was surprised at how comfortable they felt. Immediately you're met with a chime indicating the glasses are on and then a voice will tell you the battery level. The best part about the glasses are how subtle the audio is to anyone else around you, but how clear and clean the audio is to the wearer itself. It's not necessarily bone conduction technology, but the audio is so good when wearing the glasses and I keep it around about half volume. Anyone around me can barely hear it. You can definitely wear this in a noisy environment like on a bus or walking outside and enjoy really clear audio without bothering anyone around you. This includes phone calls as well and I tested it with a call walking outside. The person on the other end could hear me and the audio was crystal clear. I could in turn hear them and have a private conversation as if I were talking on my phone. Taking a picture is quite easy by pressing this button once. A sound will play to indicate a picture has been taken and holding down on the button will enable recording. You can also see this visually based on the inside LED which glows indicating video recording is in progress or quickly flashes once to indicate a picture was taken. And don't worry, this can be enabled or disabled within the app. Speaking of the app, this is the main hub that brings most of the functionality of the glasses, so we'll dive a little bit into that now. You will need to download the MetaView app either on iOS or Android. Once installed, it was easy to pair and the app ran me through a quick tutorial to show me all of the functions of the glasses. The app is simply laid out. We have three tabs on the bottom. Home, which doesn't really house much of anything useful. The gallery, where you can see your recent media and montages you created in the app. And then finally, the settings. When you record video or photos on the glasses, they will essentially show up in the gallery section. However, you cannot view them immediately. You'll need to first sync them from the device in order to view photos or play videos. When importing, it'll connect to a local Wi-Fi connection that is created by the glasses so that it can quickly transfer data. The glasses do have to be opened up. They can't be folded in order for it to work 
which is quite unfortunate. Inside the app, we have some options that we can configure. You can customize the gestures, notification LED brightness, sounds, wear detection, and much more. Configuring the capture button gives you the option to press once or press and hold to take either a picture or video. The touchpad on the sidearm can also be configured to bring up Spotify with one tap or play and resume music. Holding it down by default will bring up the assistant. And don't mistake this for a smart assistant like Google or Siri. Meta's own voice assistant will allow you to do basic voice functions like pause music, take a picture or video, or answer a call. It can't do much beyond that, like tell you the weather or update you on traffic like a normal assistant can. In terms of calls or messages, you can connect the glasses to WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or your phone dialer, which is pretty cool. I can see how this could get annoying though after a while when you're receiving multiple messages interrupting you, but could also be useful to keep you entertained on that group chat while you're in a meeting. So let's talk about the picture and video quality. You can take pretty good photos at 12 megapixels, although don't expect to do much zooming in without severely deteriorating the quality. These are great for sharing on social media, and that is pretty much it. They do look great though, and the glasses snap the image quite fast. You shouldn't make too sudden movements though, because it might come out a bit blurry. Video looks decent as well, but nothing to write home about. You're looking at videos in 1440 by 1920 resolution at 30 frames per second. The unfortunate part though is that you can't really adjust the aspect ratio for photos or videos on the glasses or in the app. You're pretty much stuck with what you get. The only adjustment that can be made within the app is the length of the video itself which ranges from a minimum of 15 seconds to a maximum of 60 seconds. The reason for this is due to the limited storage on the glasses itself, which is 32 gigabytes. I really wish we could go longer than 60 seconds though. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Good one. Okay. Finally, let's talk about the battery life. It's the most disappointing part of the glasses coming in at just under four hours in my usage. I averaged around three hours and 30 minutes, depending on how often I synced photos and videos to my phone and how often I listen to music as well. The one saving grace though, is that they do charge in the case. So when they're stored, you can quickly juice it up again. A full battery on the case will allow you to charge the glasses up to eight times before needing a charge itself. Now, what don't I like about these glasses? Well, for starters, the charging mechanism with the case is not that great. I wish a wireless charging mechanism was used where it would magnetically snap into place. Pogo pins are so last decade. Not to mention the capture button is in a very awkward place. More often times than not, I would find myself taking off the glasses or putting them on and accidentally activating the capture button to take a picture or sometimes even recording a video. At the beginning of this video, I told you I might switch over to the clear version of these glasses so I can wear them all day in any scenario. I reviewed some Snapchat glasses years ago on my channel, which I believe felt more like a novelty at the time since I couldn't really do much apart from taking pictures. These are the glasses I wish I had at the time since you can get them in clear or transition lenses and you can listen to music and take great photos and videos for social media. Now despite the awkward design nuances, I think these are an excellent pair of glasses and the price is not too steep either coming from a reputable company like Ray-Ban. These are 369 Canadian, bringing them just over 400 with tax. However, I purchased them on Amazon where I was able to get a discount with gift cards, so the price hit wasn't as bad. Speaking of Amazon, I do have some links down below for the glasses where you can get them for the best prices. Buying from those links will just help me bring more content to you. Now, what do you think of the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses? Are they for you? Sound off in the comments down below. Until then, my name is J.I., thank you for watching, and thank you for kicking it with me.